I'm Brian Olatunji, and I'm a drag racer. My name is Juan Carlos Bloom, and I'm a race car driver. My name is Jonathan Castro. I'm a professional drifter. I started with nothing. I didn't even have a screwdriver. This is not easy, but I have to keep going. I understand the risk, but I never give up. I want to win for me and for my country. This is not just a passion. This is who I am. It's my dream. It is my dream to become a champion. To be a champion. Hey there, I'm Brian Tong, and welcome to Dreams to Champions, the stories of aspiring drivers. Now, imagine the pressure. You're 18 years old, it's your first major race in the US, and you don't want anyone to know you're nervous. Welcome to the world of the rookie trying to move up in US motorsports. Welcome to the world of Juan Carlos Bloom. At Toledo Speedway, a Mexican racer, Juan Carlos Bloom, is about to take a major step in his young career. His first ARCA race. It's my first time in this kind of cars and this kind of, of track category. It's different, but I think good. I feel good. The competition includes 11 drivers who've been racing since before Juan Carlos was even born. Guys like Frank Kimmel, a nine-time ARCA champion whose father also raced. Great. It's really cool to see those guys here. Thank you. Thanks. To the extent that Juan Carlos has fans in the U.S., it is largely due to his whiz kid success in Mexico. His mentor is Cuban-American businessman Armando Fitz. If you don't race well, you see that light blue car out there? Yeah. That's your next car that you'll be <laughs> racing, okay? So, have a good day. <laughs> Today, Juan Carlos is driving this Dodge Charger, owned by Carl Long. And that way, if he gets in a wreck, they don't hold him in the car. Who will also serve as the spotter. This car is gonna be really good during the race for him, real consistent. How good? Well, Juan Carlos is more optimistic than anyone else on the team. I hope finishing top 15 is my, uh, my goals today. Just hoping with a top 20 finish for his first time out will be great. Out of 35 cars on the grid, Juan Carlos is 30th, near the end of the pack. There were 13 cautions here last spring. A lot of wrecks. We've got to be smart today, okay? We've got to run all day. That's all you got to do is run all day. Yeah. Look ahead, look ahead, way ahead. When I'm standing outside the car, I feel the pressure from my team, my family, the spectators. But once I'm in the car, all my focus is on the race. I put everything else out of my mind. Before the race, a last-minute ritual with JC's sister. And a radio check. There's concern about a language barrier. JC, do you understand when I tell you you're clear by three, clear by five? I'm talking about uh, car links. Yeah, yeah. And there's a final pep talk from Armando. Be smart, look ahead. I don't care where we finish. We gotta run the whole way. <laughs> you ready to get locked up? Okay, crank it up. Ready. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, you're coming to the green. Armando and Carl are realistic, prepared to see their driver lose ground. Okay, if they're lapping him, does he give them the outside or the inside? The inside. Okay, Juan Carlos, si los leaders se encantan, muévete pa arriba, déjale yo y la bajo, okay? Okay, and then, Juan Carlos Bloom's first ARCA race. Get ready. Green, green, green. It's showtime, and Juan Carlos is in for a surprise. That six car is trying to drive around your little on the outside.
Before we get back to J.C. Bloom at Toledo, next week we will check in with Brian Olatunji, a drag racing mechanical engineer from Detroit, Michigan. Brian's degree has been instrumental in building his drag racing career. So I know that it has definitely helped me, and I wouldn't tell anyone that doesn't have an engineering background that they couldn't make it in racing, but I tell you that if you did, uh, it will definitely help you out tremendously because it's just a, it's a big to have problem. That's all, it's like a huge physics problem. And that's the cool part, right? If physics is cool to you, then you have to love pressure. Brian seems to thrive on it. Forced to self-fund his racing program, he finds his back against the wall 12 hours prior to the first race of the year. Brian's hot rod doesn't have an engine yet. Pressure, maybe a little. But Brian Olatunji is a born drag racer and he refuses to let anybody outwork him. But we'll see you guys at the racetrack in the morning. We'll be there. Count on it. That's next week on Dreams to Champions. Juan Carlos Bloom, an ARCA rookie, is under two sets of watchful eyes. His spotter, Carl Long. It's a long race, so just be smooth with it. Don't wreck it. You'll pass him. And his mentor, Armando Fitz. Juan Carlos, be patient. Your car's a lot faster than those cars. Be patient. Just one minute into the race, Juan Carlos passes the number three car. Clear, clear. And he challenges the orange number six car. That's the Venezuelan, Milka Duno. Outside. Back it off, back it off. Clear, go, go, go. A few seconds later, Juan Carlos tries again. Stay low, stay low, back it down. Caution, caution. Okay, roll on, you're doing good. Early in the race, I felt very confident. I felt fast, the car felt very good. At lap 29, there's another wreck. And a few minutes after restarting, Juan Carlos passes Larry Barford in the 04 car. Inside, clear, clear. And veteran James Hilton in number 48. Come on, come on. Uh, clear, clear. Then 19-year-old Corbin Forrester in number 68. Okay, inside. Come on with it. Come on. Inside. That's three cars in five minutes. Me sentía... I felt like a great driver. Un gran piloto. Me sentía... I felt like I had done a really good job. It feels that good to other young drivers as well. And in a single minute, Four of them pass Juan Carlos, 19-year-old Alex Bowman, and 18-year-old Chris Busher. Busher out in front of the field now. Then two more rookies, Brennan Poole and 16-year-old Eric Jones. That car behind is a lead lap car. He's looking inside. Give him the bottom. Give him the bottom. Go high. No, no, me sentía. I didn't feel the pressure and I wasn't angry. At that point, I knew I was gonna get passed because my car was running hot from me passing the other cars and I knew I needed to get into the pits. Caution, back it down, back it down. So when you come in, wheel straight, foot on the brake, stop on the sign. Right here, right here. Wheel straight, foot on the brake. By lap 82, there have been six cautions. Now break it, break, break, slow down, slow down. A risk that comes with tight turns on a short track. No es el miedo de chocar, no, no, no. I'm not afraid of crashing. It is part of a high-speed sport. What you try to do is run a smart race. Just past the halfway point, it happens again. While Juan Carlos and number six, Milka Duno, are battling for the road, in an instant, up ahead, the pile up. Hey, caution, caution. We're in the crash, guys. 
We're in the crash. What happened, Carl? The six came down on him? No, he was down there with him, and somebody spun right dead in front of him. I just felt my body hit from one side to the other. There's so much adrenaline. It's 30 minutes before you feel the pain. Are we that bad? Oh, we're pretty bad. Yeah, I think we're pretty bad. Juan Carlos Bloom's first ARCA race has ended with his first ARCA crash. I felt so bad. I cried. I had my helmet on and I was crying. You couldn't do nothing about that. The five cars in front of you had nowhere to go. Good job. Despite the abrupt ending, Juan Carlos says it was a valuable day of lessons learned. The team do a great job with the car. I feel amazing on the track and I think for the next race I'm going to run better. We'll follow his story next week when Juan Carlos confronts his fear, driving faster than he's ever done before. But next on Dreams to Champions. Tell me issues that I need to be a bad boy. I don't want no one driving a car. Dominican drifter Jonathan Castro. Is there a problem with his car? The clutch is not working. The tranny is not working. That's it. Or is he out of his league? This is not grassroots anymore. If anything's different on the car, you need to let us know. Jonathan Castro got the bug for drifting, watching videos on YouTube, just like I do. But he became a champion at home in the Dominican Republic. But he had bigger dreams, and now he's following them, to Formula Drift in the US. He's new to the car, new to the crew, and new to this level of competition. Jonathan Castro's first visit to the US was, well, I guess you could say it was a road trip. He's come from the Dominican Republic to round one of the American drifting competition known as Formula D at the storied Long Beach Street Course. Out of 59 drivers here, only the top 32 will compete. Castro doesn't make it. I'm not confident with the car, so I decided to take it easy, honestly, and go for it as safe as possible. Castro's father had warned him that payday in this line of work is a long shot. After Long Beach, he said, hey, what are you doing, Dad? It's just, you see it didn't work, uh, he's spending a lot of money, well, I don't understand it. Castro believes there's a problem with the car. The car was having, not, wasn't behaving the, the way that I wanted and he's frustrated with the crew. When I want something, it's take too long to other people understand what I want. And I have to show them that it's not me, it's a car to be fixed to me, not me fixing the car, so the car. But car owner John Shin and the crew think the problem is a nervous rookie on a tough drive. I don't think he ever felt comfortable there. There's walls everywhere. You can't see anything, it's just wall, 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 wall. A month later, round two. Road Atlanta in Northeast Georgia. At practice, the day gets off to a lousy start. The car's just turning off by itself. Copy that. He's saying it's turning that turning off by itself. A little bit of fuel problems, but we just fill it up and hopefully that fixes it. We just got a signal, here we go. In the first 
run to qualify, Castro has trouble getting the car into third gear. Now it happens this, it's so, it's so piss off. The crew thinks there's a problem with the clutch. I uh, just need to bleed out the clutch fluid real quick. Um, maybe some air got in there. But Castro thinks the problem is with the transmission. What we can do with the training? I don't know if it's a training, but we'll figure it out. He's making sounds. Even you're doing long sounds. Since when? When it gets hot, getting worse and worse and worse. We're getting ready to go for our second qualifying run. We think it's going to be awesome. Castro's second attempt seems to go well. Oh, yeah, come on, link it. Link it, baby. Come on, oh, yes. Oh, yes, we're almost there. Come on, baby. <laughs> but once again, the score is too low to make it into the competition. 47. Castro is mad. I'm the one okay, driving on a car. Man. Something happened to the, the car. The car. No, 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 no. And the team will soon be at each other's throats. What the hell? First at Long Beach, and now at Road Atlanta, Jonathan Castro's score is too low to qualify. 47 your best. No way I can make an end out of that. The official tries to sugarcoat the bad news. It's, it's your first time for all these U.S. courses, so um, you know next time will be a lot easier. Um, is there anything that you want to add from the beginning of practice? At the team meeting, Castro is frustrated, and he's about to explode. I prefer work in an environment that is, is you know, cool. But now it's, it's some issues that I need to be a bad boy. I don't want no one driving a car. And if I have to do it, I'll do it. When team owner John Shin asks for feedback, Castro drops the hammer. Whatever you have to just do, let just me do it. Know. Just let me I'll Over do it, man. third gear and the transmission. No, I think we just need to change that and do the things that we need to do about it. Change what? Change the training, change the clutch, or change whatever, though. You make it easy to put there. It's a sponsor part. It's a $4,500 sponsor part. I don't care. We can't it's change. not working. No, we got to make figure a way to make it work. Let's go see Colden and tell him this it's not working. It's 845, 55, 35, and whatever, but it's not working. You know. It's working fine. I'm the driver. I think we'll have to be working as the way that I want it, not the way that he wanted. Shin thinks Castro is making excuses, scapegoating the crew and the car. Don't come into the pit and tell me that you over-rotated and that it was your fault and then blame the tranny 20 minutes later. What the hell? We need to just keep all communications on the, on the table and make sure that everyone's on the same page. If you're not giving us the correct information or if anything's wrong with the car, we need to know that right yeah, we away. We need the feedback. Then we can Because then we can start working on the car. But we can't just go out there half <laughs> This is not grassroots anymore. If anything's different on the car, you need to let us know. All right, I got to tell you, anything that's happened to the car, you need to change this. I now need to change the training. It's not working. No, no, we don't need to change training. We need to make it work. I don't care if you're going to change it, change the clutch, change whatever. I need to put there without no problem. OK, then you tell me that, and I will make it work. But John, the things are, he, he is getting in this. He's like, uh, he want to do it. He want to, oh, yes, I need, but you know, I'm at the big boss, and you have to be like that. I know he's upset. If you completely f the car, who's going to, who's the blame? You or am I? And he needs to let everything out. If you want me to drive the car, it has to be new, new fixed driving. He's in a brand new platform. He's in a totally different kind of uh, environment. There's no way that there's no pressure on him right now. Part of the pressure involves his Dominican sponsors. I need to call my yeah. sponsors and say, sorry, I didn't qualify again because uh, I made a mistake or the team made a mistake. We don't know. No, no, yeah. 
Yeah. The, the thing is, when I put third, it doesn't work. So it's my fault, or the, or the guy is telling me it's my fault, or it's the training flow. So I need oh. to explain then how. But I need to know exactly where we are. The clutch is not working. The training is not working. That's it. That's what it is. OK, then let us know exactly when it happens, because when you, tell, when you go out and qualify and it's not working, and you say it hasn't been working, that's not acceptable to me. After hashing it out, the compromise is to have Castro check out the car before the next round. Palm Beach, Florida. If you can come here a week before, before Florida, we'll go out and we'll shake it down and we'll do everything we can to make it perfect for Florida. That's already done. I'm gonna be one way here. Okay. Cool. That, does that help? Can we hug it out now? Sure, yeah, sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. No hard feelings, man. Yes, yes. <laughs> Ah, see, it's now a love fest, or should I say, a soap opera. Either way, to be continued. Next week on Dreams to Champions. He's gotta go in faster, because yep. that's what everyone else is doing. A test for Jonathan Castro's car and his team. <laughs> I don't care how you do it, you gotta hit fourth gear. And Juan Carlos Blue goes to a super speedway in Michigan. But this fast, can Juan Carlos control the car? Now he was crapping in his pants. 